Hey guys, today we're going to learn how to use a terminal on any operating system you can think of. Let's get started. Hey there everyone. Today we're going to be shifting our focus into a different type of operating system that's actually been around a lot longer than the ones we've previously touched on. We'll actually be using one of those operating systems, Windows, in order to simulate and or actually just use an actual version of those operating systems that would have been used in older times. Now, Usually, when you think of a terminal, you associate it with hacking, older computers, uh, things that are antiquated, really. And what I really need to touch on is the fact that terminals are actually probably being used now more than ever. With more people becoming developers, more people getting into computer use, you'll see that more often than not, a lot more people are learning how to use this operating system and learning how to essentially automate and make their lives a lot easier. Even though graphic, graphical user interfaces are really nice, sometimes you can't beat how straightforward and quick a command prompt is. So to get started, I actually wanted to touch on what your best options for a command prompt are, depending on what operating system you're on. If you're on Linux, you already have what's considered the best of the best. Linux comes pre-installed with a bash terminal and so does Mac OS. These two terminals, though a little different just based on the operating system, share essentially the same structure. With a bash uh, shell or a bash system, you essentially find that you not only have a normal terminal, but you have a supercharged terminal that, limit, that doesn't limit you in any way. So without going any further, I'd like to actually suggest that if you're using Windows, you, you, you go to the Microsoft Store, if you're on Windows 10, and install the Windows Terminal. This system allows for you to emulate and or recreate uh, what a Bash script would work like on both a Linux and Mac OS system. And that's actually what we'll be working with today. So if you're on a Windows machine, feel free to follow along by uh, downloading Windows Terminal and going ahead with using either Command Prompt or installing what's known as Bash. But if you're on Mac OS and or Linux, you can go ahead and follow along without a problem. Let's get started. Currently standing, it is 2020. And if we actually went back a year or two, we'd find that Windows actually offers the worst solutions in terms of terminal use. Mac OS and Linux were kings at what used to be uh, tools for developers. But nowadays, Microsoft since the mid 2010s has started adopting open source software and uh, terminology as well as practices that are rooted in open source. For example, here with Windows Terminal, Windows has introduced a new system that allows for average everyday users to gain power through the use of powerful developer tools. What we're currently looking at is actually what's known as the command prompt. With command prompt, we have the ability to actually go ahead and look at what Windows was originally like. Windows really essentially looked just like this. The first Windows computers were based on this exact system that we're working with. And we know that to be true because this is just a little packet of what your entire computer is running. And in order to navigate this, we're going to learn a couple of key commands in order to get around. So, let's get going. So, to begin with the commands on Terminal, I'd actually like to discuss the fact that if you're using Terminal, you'll most likely be using commands and copying them from documentation instead of actually writing on script if you're a newer developer. Obviously, you can take this a little further, but to get started with CMD, we'll just focus on navigating and reading files. So to start, we'll go ahead and learn our first command that'll allow us to move around our system. But first, let's actually get some context as to where we are. Currently, we are in our C drive, or our main drive of our computer. We're under the user's file, and we're under my user file, or my system. 
Now, I want to see what I actually have in my folders before I move anywhere. And in order to do so, I'm going to type DIR. This is short for directory, and it will give me a list of all the directories in my system. Now, if we wanted to move to one of these files, then we would use the system function CD. CD stands for change directory. So with a CD, and let's move to my documents. We'll see that our file path has changed here on our left. Now, what was our previous? Our previous file path was simply taking us to my user account folder. And now we've extended it further from C user Geraldo to C user Geraldo documents. This will be your primary way of going around and essentially moving into files or folders. Now, if we wanted to, we could also remove a directory. And though I won't be removing any of my directories here, the command to do so would be rmdir. But usually, as I stated earlier, if you're using terminal, you're simply only going in to run a command that you're copying from somewhere else, in most cases for early developers. So, in this case, this will be sufficient for understanding the command prompt, which actually is more focused for the terminal set. Today, we'll be focusing on the most universal terminal, which is Ubuntu. But before I touch go deep into Ubuntu, I want to discuss the fact that Windows has tried to upgrade their terminal before with Windows PowerShell. But clearly, the winner in this fight for the best system when it comes to terminal by Ubuntu, well, not specifically Ubuntu, but the Linux Bash terminal. Bash will give so much tooling when it comes to terminals, and we'll actually go ahead and touch on to touch on some of the basics. Even though I just touched on the Windows command prompt terminal, I actually want you to go ahead, go back through the video, get a little cheesy cheat sheet, and write down the commands we learned for that. What really matters is this Linux or Bash term terminal that we're going to be using today. To begin, we'll start with the same command we first learned on the command prompt system. Except for here, I want you to create a che another cheat sheet, use the same sheet, to recognize and mem remember the commands for the system. So, in Windows Terminal, we went ahead and used a DIR for directory. Here, we'll be using ls for list. With ls, we'll go ahead and be able to see all the files we have. And right away, you can see that this system's a lot more updated. You have color coding, you have the system file. It's not just folders that are holding the actual files we want to see. Alongside this, we'll actually be using the same command, cd, to move around. So, a uh, little tip and little trick with this is, um, so, still change directory, but you'll find that if you want, you can go ahead and get, get really fast in the terminal when you figure out that if you type out half of the name of something, you can go ahead and press tab on most git bash terminals. So, let me go ahead and see if I can get this to work here. Not working. I'm sure there's actually a setup, and you can actually, if you would want to customize these systems in uh, the new Windows terminal. So, again, we'll go ahead and CD into the documents of this Linux system that I have running on my Windows machine. So now, I'm in my documents, and again, I'll type ls, see what I have. Now, one of the great things about bash over command prompt is that we can actually use tools inside of the system. For example, I'm looking through my files here, and I specifically want to transition to my pictures. So I'll go ahead and move to my pictures. I'm sure I have to use the quotations. Oh, permission denied. Now, that's a thing to consider with the Linux terminal as well. You'll need to sign on to what's known as a root user and or give a command to let the system know if you're in charge. This is famous in Linux terminal because it's kind of like asking uh, for something and then having to ask again with a please. And the please is really the job that uh, solves the issue. So if I run the same command, I'll go ahead and press up on my uh, arrow keys in order to get the last command I put in. And I'm going to type sudo in front of it. And with that, uh, I have to type in my password so that my system makes sure it makes sure I'm secure. Uh, my command is not found. Uh, but in either case, uh, you'll see sudo and root users of your system will be something you have to be aware about. You 
usually you can set a password through uh, a couple of different means but the real takeaway here is the fact that you have to learn how to navigate terminal if you're looking into becoming a developer now this won't be important to everyone but when it comes down to it knowing how to use terminals will make understanding how computers work a lot easier it will make working with projects a lot easier you can automate a lot of projects with terminal and when it really what i think is important about terminal is the computer logic that you get ingrained in your head it becomes second nature once you understand how this sort of system works so hopefully you'll join us next week when we continue in our series of computer basics and uh in order to Have a nice day.